The following is a comfortably zoned radio network production. Hello, everyone. This is Rob Danger with Comfortably Zoned Radio Network, and I'm here with Jack DeGraw, and we're talking Yankee baseball. How are you doing, Jack? Good. How are you tonight, Robert? Uh, not too bad. Uh, last week when we talked, we touched on James Paxton's injury, and then all of a sudden, Luis Severino, he's got a, a, a problem with his forearm, and... Uh, some saying it might be nothing, and others, like Brian Cashman, seem awfully concerned that it might be something serious, and they're sending him to New York for three days of testing. Uh, what do you think about that? <laughs> well, the, what, what I understand, his form, it starts to pop up when he throws change-ups. And, you know, th- this this was happening, you know, uh, they were there was some some concerned like last year in the playoffs because you remember robert like remember and against the astros and even against the twins you know uh severino and paxton they were only pitching like four innings yeah three or four innings and it's like you know what's going on here and stuff so i from yeah, what i understand go ahead i'm sorry oh no i was gonna say that the medical staff because you're right i mean the injury that Paxton's dealing with, he, he he was dealing with at the end of last season, and the same thing with Severino. And you wonder, you know, what happened between then and now? How come this wasn't resolved before spring? You know, they they arrived to spring training. Yeah, and you know the, the question that you know you like, I'm sure a lot of people are asking, well, why wasn't this taken care of? You know, right after the season. You know, yeah, and, I mean, rest, and now you're, you're missing two starters. Yeah, because I, I know during the off season they set, sent Severino to have a an MRI and a CT scan, and both came back clean. So there was no noticeable injury, but he's still suffering from from soreness in his forearm. And listening to Brian Cashman talk today, I mean, you could see the worryment in his face. I mean, he, you know, he, he was trying to be honest, saying it, it might not be anything serious, or it it could be something that we'll we'll have to worry about when it comes. So, I mean, we we there's a good chance we might be without Severino and Paxton to start the season. Yeah, and knowing how conservative the Yanks are, I mean, uh, you know, it, it could be. Uh, you know, maybe June at the earliest when we, we see any of these guys. Yeah, I mean, and last year, it reminds me of last year with Hicks when, you know, they said, you know, his with his back that, oh, he just needs a few days of rest, and it turned out to be half the season. I just, I'm hoping in Severino's case, that's, that's not going to happen to him because Paxton will be back by May sometime. But if Severino's having trouble with the throwing arm, uh, that concerns me. Yeah, because you you know, I, I guess they're gonna send him up to New York here from Tampa on Monday and they're gonna do three days of test and then, you know, uh you know, hopefully we'll, we'll know more by uh you know, the end of the week. But uh they haven't even started the games yet and uh you know, the Yankees are starting to drop like flies again. Yeah, and as of right now, I mean, if you were to start the season without Without Paxton or Severino, your rotation would go Garrett Cole, Tanaka, Hap, followed by Sessa, and either Louisa or Montgomery. Yeah, well, you know, the the, the thing is, you know, Louisa has been hurt, and, uh, you know, Montgomery, you know, he only pitched, I think, four innings last year coming back from Tommy John. So usually yeah. when you come back from Tommy John, it takes a while to, you know, to get back, uh, you know, get back in the groove. So, uh, and, you know, Tanaka has been dealing with arm, you know, a possible arm injuries for the last three seasons. So, you know, maybe yeah. he, his arm trouble could, you know, pop up <laughs> out of nowhere. So, uh, I don't know. We might have uh, Dooley Womack pitching by the beginning of the year. Who the heck knows? <laughs> and I, I saw a video of uh, Montgomery 
pitching to Tyler Wade the other day, and Tyler Wade was taking Montgomery deep. And um, I know it's only spring and everyone's, you know, working on things, but for Tyler Wade to be taking, ty- taking you know, Montgomery deep, you know, it concerns me a little. <laughs> I, I think you might be right. I think you might need to start the season at AAA to build up his arm strength. Yeah, because usually when you know guys come back, it, it takes sometimes it takes half a season or even a whole season just to get back, uh, you know, in the in the group because everybody uh, you know responds different. And now with everybody falling like flies, you know, I I, I think uh, you know the Yankees might pull a trade, uh, you know, before uh, you know the opening day. Yeah, and we were talking off air, and there, there was an article in the Post today about Clint Frazier. And he talked about how he was disappointed that he was playing left field in Scranton and not in New York. And in the article, Boone Boone was basically talking about how, you know, he's a talented player. He's going to have a bright future in this game. But everything Boone was saying, it was almost as if the writing was on the wall that Frazier's not part of the Yankees' plans moving forward. So I think any deal they make this year, I think you'll definitely see Frazier moved. Yeah, I, I just think, you know, uh, a, a talent like that is just going to uh, waste away in the minor leagues. He has nothing more to prove. And, uh, you know, they can, you know, they can get, probably get a good pitcher for him and let, let uh, you know, Frazier have a career now because, uh, you know, it, even if he's on the team, he's not going to get many at bats and, uh you know, he he's just wasting away in New York. Yeah, and, and they said there's four players that are fighting for a roster spot, and that's Tyler Wade, Clinton Frazier, Mike Ford, and Estrada. And they said only two of the four are gonna are gonna make it, and Tyler Wade will, will make it, and probably Mike Ford. And Frazier's going on 25 years old; he's entering his prime. It would just be an injustice if, if the Yankees just kept holding on to him. Yeah, because I, you know, I think like a guy, look, Tyler Wade can play all over, and if Torres has trouble at short, you know, Wade could step in and do a good job defensively. And Ford, you know, is a is is a good hitter. He, you know, he's got a lot of power and he's got a great eye at the plate. And Estrada, you know, he can play. He can be in AAA, and at some point of the season, we'll, we'll see him just like last year. But Frazier, yeah. I mean, uh, you know. It, it, like you said, it's just an injustice to him to, you know, have him rot away in the, on the bench or in AAA. Yeah, because, I mean, Estrada, he came up last year, and he played in 35 games. He batted uh, 250. He had um, uh, 16 hits, three homers, 12 RBIs, but he played great defense. So, I mean, he's someone that, you know, you could bring up and, and fill in in the infield if need be, you know. And like you said, Tyler Wade can play everywhere in the infield and outfield. Yeah, I mean, he, he's a good piece to have on your team. And, uh, you know, the, the Yankees, it's not going to be offensively. You know, they, they're going to score a lot of runs. Yeah. But, uh, you, you know, and if the pitching can stay healthy, the pitching is good. I mean, the bullpen is outstanding, but, uh, you know, you have to be concerned this early in the spring. You you know, you, you, you lose two of your starters uh, right off the bat. And, you know, these injuries were popping up at the end of last season and in the playoffs. So, uh, you know, and obviously up to this point, rest has not helped, uh, you know, with, with the arm misery. So, you know, going no. forward, it'd be interesting to see what happens. <laughs> You know, and also, I don't know if uh, you heard this. I heard that Mike Ford um, actually slimmed down a little bit coming into spring training and that he's in in great shape. Yeah, he looks good. I mean, he was, I was, you know, the last three days I went down to the Yankee practice and, you know, I was watching him hit on a, you know, a backfield. He was hitting off Holder and, uh, you know, with a couple other, uh, Chad Green and stuff. and And he looks good. You know, he, he yeah. definitely lost a lot of weight, and, uh, you know, he looks he looks like he's ready to go. Yeah, and another player that lost um, 25 to 30 pounds, they said, was Gary Sanchez. And I think Gary Sanchez losing, you know, an extra 25, 30 pounds is going to do nothing but help him. 
behind the plate and at the, at the plate. Yeah, I mean, they they uh, the Yankees hired a, a coaching instructor for him. whose name uh, I can't remember it right now. And I think, you know, definitely losing weight, it's going to help him be more mobile. Luke Voigt also has lost a lot of weight, so he'll, he should be more mobile around first base. But, uh, you know, uh, I, I, hopefully Sanchez can pick up on his defense a little. He improved last year. And if he can, you know, improve his defense – you know he's uh, he could be one of the best players in the game. He's already a good, very good player. Yeah, and I'm looking at Mike Ford's uh, stats from last year, and he played 50 games and he hit 12 home runs, batted 260. He had an on base percentage of of uh, three and a half. I mean, pretty impressive for a guy who hit a total of of what more than 30 home runs between AAA and the majors last year. Yeah, yeah, he's just gotten better every year. I remember when he was down here in Tampa in the single A, you know, I think he had five home runs in one season. So, uh, you know, he, he's definitely, uh, you know, got better every year. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be scared to throw him at first base for 100 games or so. I think he uh, can do the job. Yeah, and um, also I heard that uh, Gino uh, Stanton, He's going to be splitting a lot of time between DH and the outfield, so I I think you'll you'll see someone like Talkman play a lot of left field or or whoever else whoever they have out there whether it be Anderhar Talkman, but they plan on DH and um, Stanton as much as they did in his first season with the Yankees. Yes, so that's the plan now to have uh, Stanton and right and right field. Well, um, left field, but I think you'll see they might put him in right okay. field and DH, DH judge, um, and then maybe have him in left field. And uh, they just plan on DH and him and, and trying to get everyone involved, especially if Vanderhaar makes the roster as a as an outfielder. Yeah, because I you know I figured you know like left field would probably be Stanton's best position, and yeah. you know Talking can play all over and. Talk that could even play the out center field and do a good job. And you got Brett Gardner and, you know, and, and Duhar, I don't know, Robert, he, he might be traded because, uh, you know, you don't know what's going to happen with the pitching, but, uh, you know, I know he, I, I see him working out in the outfield the last three days. He looks good at catching off a machine and, <laughs> you know, with a yeah. bat like that, uh, it's something special, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, but the Yankees got so much offensive talent, it's hard to find spots for these guys. Yeah, they said the one thing that, that can help Andahar this year is if he um, has a really hot bat in spring training. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure he'll get, a, he'll get a, a, lot of, a lot of bats up here, you know, and uh, if you can catch fly balls in Florida in, in uh, late February and March, you can catch them anywhere. So it'll be interesting to see how he does. And, you know, uh, see him play a little first base and, you know, maybe uh, get some games at third. So I, I see him playing, uh, you know, a lot of games this spring. You know, uh, yeah. he'll probably get 70, 80 at bats. Yeah, because, I mean, the type of year he had his rookie year, I mean, the guy could hit. I mean, I'm pulling up his stats now. Uh, where is he? Yeah, his rookie year. He had 573 at bats, and he only struck out 97 times. I mean, the guy, you know, I mean, in, in this era where everyone's striking out 150, 200 times, Andahar had under 100 strikeouts and almost 600 at bats, and he batted 297 with 27 homers, 92 RBIs, and 47 doubles. I mean, the guy can ab absolutely just rake. So I mean, if he has a, a an extremely hot spring training, you, you might want to hold on to him just in case Urshela doesn't quite have the year he did last year. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, th there's there's not a lot of spots open, no. but uh, you know, the, the Yankees have a you know, like I keep saying, they got so much offensive talent, and you know, some guys are just going to get left. Uh, you know, they're going to get thrown in AAA, and you're not going to have too many happy players, you know, when they could be raking in the big leagues, and, you know, they're stuck, uh, you know, hitting in Scranton. Yeah. 
I mean, I mean, DJ LeMayu at second base. I mean, you got Luke Roy at first, but I mean, you, you never know if they have a platoon thing with Roy and, and Ford and Torres at shortstop or Shell at third. I mean, you can maneuver a, a bunch of players in the outfield. Um, they say Stanton looks really good this spring, healthy, which is something I hope he remains for the entire year because I think Stanton could be someone who has a, a monster year this year. Yeah, I mean, he, he's done it everywhere. I mean, uh, even in an off season, he had 100 RBIs, 38 home runs. I mean, he's the kind of guy, he could hit 50 homers. Yeah, you know, uh, I mean, he he's an elite player. I mean, uh, he he's got great talent. I mean, his first year at the Yankees, people considered that an off year, but the 38 home runs and 100 RBIs led the Yankees. <laughs> so, I mean, if that's an off year, I'll take it. If it's going to lead the team in homers and RBIs. Well, there, there's. He, I think he might have changed his stance a little bit. So that's something to look forward to, uh, you know, when the game starts tomorrow in spring training, you know, to see if he's, you know, uh, changed his approach at the plate. And also, I mean, I was thinking about this. Talkman, I, I went back and looked at his stats. I mean, this is some, this is a guy who, even in the minor leagues, hit very well. And um, if Brett Gardner starts off the season struggling like he did last year, um, I think Gardner last year batted 230 in two of the three months. If Gardner starts out struggling, you might see them mix Talkman in there a little bit more, especially if he's hitting. What do you think about something like that happening? Yeah. Well, you know, that because like, I, I, uh, like we always say, Talkman can play all three outfield positions. And the guy's a good, he, you know, he's just not a power hitter. He can hit the ball all over. And, 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 you know, the Yankees need a guy like that. You can't have everybody, you know, swinging for the fences. That's why, you know, LeMayu's so good. So, uh, yeah. you know, you know they, they they missed Talkman last year in the playoffs. Yeah, he because, got hurt towards the end of the year. <clears throat> yeah, because, I mean, you know, that series against uh, the Houston Cheaters, uh, you know, he could have got some, you know, big hits, some clutch hits and stuff like that. You know, and uh, so they really missed him. Yeah, and I mean, right now, I mean, even though no games have started, I I worry about Judge and his shoulder if it if it's something that's going to nag him throughout the season, which is something you don't want to see. And you know, what's going to be the severity of Severino's arm? Because when Severino is healthy. I mean, he, he he's an ace. I was looking at his career numbers. Severino, he's 42 and 26 with a 3.46 ERA. He, and he's pitched 530 innings, and opponents are only batting 230 off of him. And his strikeout to walk ratio, um, his strikeouts per nine innings is 10. I mean, so when he's healthy, Severino, he's among some among the best in baseball, but he's going to have a nagging nagging injury as well i mean it, it worries me to start the season when two of your best players might be uh hurt yeah i mean uh, severino stuff is electric and and uh you know but but that's the thing with pitchers you you just never know you know you you, yeah. you, you need them but you know every pitch could be their last and uh you know you you <laughs> It's it's just you know it's just up in the air. I mean, uh, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, because with Paxton, you know he'll be back sometime in May, but you know Cole's going to be Garrett Cole. But then you got Tanaka, who always gives you a great game followed by a, a mediocre game, and then you got Hap, who you never know what kind of Hap's going to show up if he's going to give you five five good innings or if he's going to be knocked out in the third and then you know you got Sessa and the Wiza and Montgomery waiting in the wings you just wonder if uh, the first couple months their offense can carry them through until at least Paxton gets back well you know the, the thing is Robert I, I, I Hap has been a good pitcher throughout throughout most of his career 
And I don't worry about him too much because he can – I think even though he might have struggled at times last year, he still won 12, 13 games, and he can usually, you know, keep you, you know, keep you in the game. I, th- I think, you know, with, with Cole, Cole uh, you know, one of the top pitchers in baseball, but I think he'll make everybody else better. I mean, I was on a backfield yesterday uh, a couple of days ago when Cole was throwing, you know, uh, live batting practice. And it, it's the the interesting thing, you know, you had all the analytics set up, but the the one the only pitcher there was Tanaka, and he was behind really? that screen, and he he was watching with intent, you know. And I think a guy like Cole, you know, can work with Severino and work with uh, Tanaka, and he can just he can be like a, a CC, you know, he'll just make everybody better because he, you know, he's an artist in, in his craft, and uh, you know not only on the field, but off the field, he can be a big addition. Yeah, Cole Cole even said he was looking forward to working with Tanaka and Severino. And I agree with you. I think he's going to have a huge impact on the rotation, rotation and, and even the pitchers in the bullpen as far as teaching them, you know, what works and what doesn't. Yeah, I mean, and and one of the things I heard down here, uh, Robert, a friend of mine was talking to Jack Curry, one of the Yankee, you know, reporters, and they're going to try to get Cole and David Cohn together. Uh, Uh, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that would be just like a a great show because, uh, you know, those guys know pitching inside and out. I mean, Cole even gets intent just throwing a bullpen. Yeah, you know he throws he throws a bad pitch in a bullpen session, and you know he's he you know he gets upset. So he he's a perfectionist, and uh, you know it it it's, it could be great watching him all season. Yeah, and um, Dave, uh, the Yankees' uh, hot prospect or number one prospect, Davey Garcia, um, he threw to a bunch of hitters yesterday, including Clint Frazier. Uh, Stanton and a few others and they said he was extremely impressive. They said the only one that 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 got a hit off of him was um um Talkman who after looking foolish on a breaking pitch um hit an opposite field home run, but otherwise Debbie Garcia was one of the guys that was extremely impressive the other day. And even though they say he's in line or in competition for the fifth spot, he'll start the season in Triple A. But you know the fact that everyone's so high on him and he's looking good, I'm anxious to get a get a look at him just to see what we got. Well, I'm sure we'll you know we'll see all these top prospects like the the first uh, you know the first week ten days of the season. That's what makes the uh, the beginning of the spring training it. Uh, inter- interesting. You can see all the young, uh, the young talent the Yankees have, and they'll be given a chance, you know, to pitch in the the big game. So uh, that'll be something to look forward to in the next week or so. Yeah, and and um, Clark, he never pitched higher than Double A, right? I don't, I don't believe so. He might have had a couple starts in Triple A, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not positive. But the thing is, he he faced top flight competition in college. Yeah, so I'm anxious I mean, to get a look at him too. Yeah, yeah, because he threw a bull. He he threw a live batting practice the other day after Cole. So there's a good chance that we we might see Schmidt on uh, Monday night against the Pirates, you know, after Cole. So it, it looks like he might be lined up uh, to throw an inning, inning or two on Monday. Yeah, today I, um, today Hap threw a little bit, followed by uh, Michael King, Luis Sessa, and Tropino. But uh, Hap's going to be pitching on the 22nd, and Loiza will be pitching on the 23rd. Cole will be pitching on the 24th, Sessa on the 25th, and Tanaka on the 26th. Okay, because I know they were they had Cole lined up. He's going to pitch Monday, and then he's going to pitch the 29th, and he's going to pitch the the 5th, the 10th, the 15th, and 20th of March, and that he'll be lined up for uh, opening day in Baltimore if they don't get snowed out. That's cool, and I'm curious to see what kind of lineup 
um, Boom puts out this year. I know they go by analytics nowadays, but uh, it'd be interesting to see what kind of lineup that, that they put out there because Glaber Tour is – he he's just gotten better and better his first two years, and I could really see him batting number three in the lineup, you know, behind Judge. Yeah, I mean, there, there's so many options you can put out there, and uh, but I mean, you know, Glaber has just uh, you know stepped up, and like you say, he gets he gets better every year, and uh, you know, he he could be a number three, number four hitter in you know the near future. I mean, Stanton. Judge Sanchez. I mean, th- there's there's no weak spots in in the lineup. I mean, uh, Lemayu. It, it's just uh, you know, it's it, it, it's a great lineup. Yeah, and I'm pulling up their uh, schedule. I guess they hmm. it's refreshing. They I guess they start the season officially. Uh, at Baltimore for three and three at yeah. Tampa. March yeah, March yeah, 26th. They, yeah, they face Baltimore, then Tampa, Toronto, and then Baltimore. So all teams in their divisions except for the Red Sox. Those teams, I mean, Tampa, Tampa's a team that, you know, could be a – Right there, too, at the end. I mean, I think the Yankees win 100 games again as long as their health, you know, is good. But Tampa, they're always there at the end. They're a tough team. Yeah, they always have a they, – they always have a – they do a great job over there. They always have a way to, you know, build a solid team. And, you know, they, they, they know how to move players at the right time and, and pick up, uh, you know, talent in the, in the minor leagues that, you know – play out for them in the big league. So they, they do a great job and I'm sure they'll, they'll be around 95, a hundred wins. And, you know, the Red Sox will probably be a little weaker, you know, losing Mookie and uh, David Price. And, uh, yeah. you know, it'll be interesting to see how Toronto does with all the young kids. Yeah. And uh, the Minnesota twins, uh, I think they they'll be right there too. Again. I mean, right. I mean, I think they picked up a, a couple of players. They should be yeah, they picked as up, they were last they, year. Yeah, they picked up some. Uh, they picked up a, a solid pitcher from the the Dodgers. So, uh, you know, the, the Twins will be right there. Baldelli, Rocco Baldelli's done a great jo- job with the Twins, and uh, you know, it, for a small market team, the Twins too are. They always have. They they have a lot of good teams over the years. Yeah. I just, I just hope, I, I just hope when we get, you know, in the playoffs, knock on wood, that we just beat the brakes off the Astros. Yeah, uh, you know, a lot of the players and the fans are not too happy with, uh, you know, what's what's going on. I mean, the Astros got a, a slap on the wrist, and you know, the. They were, the commissioner and you know Major League they were afraid to go after the Astros because of uh, you know the, the the you know the contracts running out with the players yeah. about, about a year or so. But I think if the players if the players are mad, they might go to their union and say, look, these guys should be suspended because you know it it's hurting the integrity of the game and uh, you know the fans are pissed off. The play, even, more, even more importantly, their peers are upset. And yeah, I mean, the the outrage across the league has been, you know, I think worse than what Major League Baseball, you know, expected it to be. It's been a lot worse. You know, and it'll be interesting that to see when the season starts. You know, like when somebody gets on first or second. You know, the players come over and chat with each other and and all this stuff. And you know, it'll be interesting even to see those interactions. Yeah, because uh, apparently Dusty Baker's already reached out to to Major League Baseball to to warn them that he's concerned for his player's safety. And the one thing I don't want to see is teams being warned beforehand before a game even starts. I think that that would be ridiculous. Yeah, because you know there there could be some uh, you know there there could be a lot of brawls this year. <laughs> you know. <laughs> It, 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 it'll be interesting, really, to see what happens. But the, the things I, I want to see, like you know, guys on second, and they 
you know, they come over and talk or on third, you know, just be see how they interact with their peers, you know, before batting practice and all this, uh, you know, uh, th- there's nothing worse when you lose respect of your, 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 your peers, because, uh, you know, once you lose that, you'll, you'll never get it back. Yeah. <clears throat> and Yankees play what Toronto tomorrow? Yeah, they play the the, uh, the Blue Jays at Steinbrenner. I got tickets for that. The interesting thing, Robert, uh, it's the only game all spring when the Yankees wear their home pinstripes. That's right. As a Yankee fan, I'm embarrassed that I didn't know that that the first spring training game they wear pinstripes. I never knew. I, I never noticed that before. I feel so stupid not knowing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that yeah, was one of the cool. rules. That was one of the rules George had, you know, uh, you, you, you know, they always wore their pinstripes on opening day and, you know, they, they introduced, you know, the lineups and stuff. So it's, you know, it's a, uh, it's a fun day. It's a fun day. Yeah. I mean, I, I got to admit, you know, Cashman's done a great job as has Hal Steinbrenner, but it, it does feel different without the boss, George Steinbrenner, just being around. Well, he definitely made made headlines and made things more entertaining. It, I would I would love to hear George's comment on the Astros. I'm oh, sure uh, you know yeah. it, it wouldn't be a boring it, it wouldn't be a boring winter up in uh, New York. You wouldn't have to hear about the Giants and the Knicks and you know George would be yeah. on the back page every damn day. <laughs> yeah, and the, and the one thing I love about George is uh, the man was one of the most generous humans to walk the face of the planet. I mean, I think that's one thing a lot of people might not know about him, but he's helped out so many people and, you know, and, and no one knew about it until years, until towards the end of his life. I mean, he's built hospitals, he's paid off people's mortgages, sent people, sent kids to school. And he even said, if any, he said, his father told him, if more than two people know, then you're doing it for the wrong reason. And it just, he's just, he was a, a complicated man, but a good man, you know, too. Well, you know, he had his good and bad side, but one of the things down here, I'll tell you in Tampa, Robert, uh, you know, he's, he does things for the, he, his name is still with the boys and girls club and there's a Steinbrenner high school and every Christmas that they have, uh, you know, they have something for, you know, uh, misfortunate families. The Yankees put something together, and you know, so so he he's done a lot for charity, and especially down here in the Tampa area, he's done he's done a lot for him, and uh, you know, he he's really uh, admired down here in, in Tampa, Florida. He made this his hometown, and uh, he did a lot for the uh, community down here. Yeah, and I was glad to see his son Hal make sure to go out and close a deal to get Garrett Cole, because it was, it was Hal Steinbrenner that closed the deal to get Garrett Cole here, right? Yeah, you know, you're not going to do anything. You're not going to spend all that money unless the owner <laughs> gives the, yeah. uh, the, the approval. You know, I, I just think the Yankees got tired of, you know, finishing one game short of the World Series, two games short, short of the World Series, five games short of the World Series. You know, when you give a big contract to the p- pitcher, you know, it could come back and bite you at the end of it. But, I mean, if you have a chance to win, you got to jump all over it. And, I mean, the Yankees were good enough to win last year. And, uh, you know, you only get so many chances, and they should be good for the next five, six years. But uh, now is the time to jump on it and, you know, take the chance. You know, see how Cole yeah. does if they win a World Series or two. It's well worth it. And it makes me it makes me think that you know if they're willing to spend all that money on coal, if they need to go out this this summer and and get another player, I, I have a feeling they'll do it because I think they're all in this year. What do you think? Do you think they'd be willing to make a big move this summer if they have to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. if they have to. But but I think the thing is, Robert, you know, like with the injury to Paxton. If you get Paxton back, that's almost like getting somebody at the 
you know, before the trade deadline, before he could be able to pitch in the big leagues or Severino. But, but I, but I look, uh, you know, before the end of spring training, you know, you're going to see the Yankees, uh, you know, maybe pull a minor deal for a player or, or sometimes like, you know, you say at the trade deadline, if, if you have a chance, you got to go for it because, uh, yeah. you know, the, the years are coming close and no cigar is, uh, you know, you you want to win right now because you got a good team, enough team to win for years. Yeah, and and uh, one thing I'm going to be looking at, you know, looking at the next week or so is is Judge healthy enough to 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 play in some some spring training games. Um, the status of Severino. Um, what else? Um, I, oh, some of the young pitchers. Those are the things I want to be looking at the next week or so. What are you, what are you going to have your eye on? Well, basically the same thing. See the, the the young pitchers. I know Judge is not going to play tomorrow. Yeah. You know, I I think he's going to he hit a little maybe a little today and might ramp it up a little tomorrow. So we might not see him till Monday or Wednesday of next week. But uh, you know. Uh, Basically, I want to see the pitchers. That, that's what I'm interested in seeing the young pitchers. Yeah, and Tanaka pitches on the 26th, which is uh, next Wednesday. Do you want to uh, do our show on the 27th, the following day, and recap the recap the yeah. the week a little bit? Yeah, we can we can do that a little later in the day because I think I might go to the Yankee game that day, which is even better okay. because I have a lot to. You know, we'll have a lot to, a uh, lot, lot more to talk about. Yeah, because Severina is supposed to visit the doctors what this Monday for three days. Yeah. So, yeah, so we might have. We, yeah. We yeah, might, we have, might a have a little more clarity. Because it might be well, it'll only be a couple. Days and he'll miss four months. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just. I just I just had this feeling it's it's like Hicks. I mean, remember last last spring training? Oh, it's just a couple days rest. It's just another week, and then half the season went by. And I'm just hoping that that's not the case with Severino. You know, and it's just strange that you know he had a couple, you know, an MRI and a CT scan during the off season, and it was normal, and he's still feeling the same pain. I just wonder what could be the cause. Well, I mean, it reminds me, Robert, I'm going to go back in history. In 1977, the Yankees had a shortstop prospect, Mickey Klutz. Mm. And he he had a minor foot injury, and uh, he was only supposed to miss a couple days, and he missed the whole year. And that's why how the Yankees, one of the reasons the Yankees went out and got Bucky Dent. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, there, there's been a history of that. He's only going to miss a few days, and... You know, yeah. <laughs> they wind up missing the, the whole season, so we'll, we'll see. Okay, well, this has been fun, Jack. So uh, next Thursday night or, or, or Friday, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah, figure yeah. it out. Yep, sounds good. And hopefully, you know, as we get farther into the season, or the, if, you know, we'll have a, a lot more things to talk about. But uh, one thing about the Yankees, it's it's never boring. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, Jack, this is a pleasure. And uh, to all the fans out there, we'll, we'll talk to you later and we'll, we'll keep you informed. The proceeding has been a comfortably zoned network production. You are advised to keep your dreams wet, your humor dry, your children and grandchildren out of military recruiting offices and off the laps of clerics who wear dresses. Thank you for listening, everyone. Happy trails.